Hey guys, so in today's video we're going to be working with the Ender 3 Pro and I've been having problems with this machine after installing Clipper on it and I was racking my brain for the longest time trying to figure out what the cause of the problem was and the issue I was having was with the bed mesh. For some reason when it would create the bed mesh, the bed mesh was just not accurate and it stumped me for the longest time. I couldn't figure out what the reason was. Recently, I was contemplating the problem and uh, arrived at the solution. So when you're working with Clipper and you're dealing with a probe, a bed probe, that's going to give you a negative Z offset, you need to specify in Clipper so that you can adjust the offset to a point below zero what that negative offset maximum needs to be. And uh, they recommend in Clipper going no more than negative two millimeters in the printer.config file. So anyway, this leads me back to, to the actual physical machine. Right? Since I do a lot of modifications to my hot end, I wind up having to create my own parts. And when I had designed this bracket, I wanted a little bit more safety margin. So I had the probe up uh, about uh, an extra... I would say millimeter and a half. So my bracket looks something like this. So this this would be this would be an example of of the bracket that's on there now. So it's a little bit lower, and this is an example of the bracket that I had on there before, which is a little bit higher. Now what was causing the problems with the mesh is that this higher bracket means that you have to have a greater negative Z offset. So my negative Z offset was very close to two millimeters. It was like 1.96 or something like that. So when Clipper would create the bed mesh and you had a low spot on the bed that was greater than 0.04 millimeters, this would be a greater number than the two millimeter maximum deviation that is set in Clipper. So uh, Clipper was not adjusting that point. And I had several points on the bed that were the same way. So if I tried to create a large model, there were certain spots that the filament was deposited way too high. And that's because of that issue. So by me bringing this, redesigning this part, and bringing the whole probe down, I've shortened the Z offset. So right now my Z offset is uh, is uh, somewhere under, uh, just under half a millimeter. Uh, another thing that I wanted to improve on, once I figured that out, is my uh, my bed mesh. So right now the probe points are determined by the limit switch right so when it's over all the way to the left this is your zero and then the other determining factor is this position over here the maximum travel for your uh, printhead before it it reaches a a physical end stop right because you don't want to you don't want to crash it into this side of the bed which means that the the closest that my probe could get to this edge of the bed is this point right here. It's about 32 millimeters away from the edge of the bed, which means when I create my mesh, if I want my mesh to be centered, that means that I have to be equally off this side of the bed with a probe, which means 32 millimeters in. So I had 32 millimeters all the way around the border of the bed that are areas that the probe can't reach and don't get probed. So Clipper was having to guess at what those areas are supposed to be because there was no way for it to probe it. So right now I'm this far off the edge of the bed. The print head can now go all the way over here. So now when I lower the when I lower the gantry. What I have here is a 12 millimeter difference. So now I'm 12 millimeters off the edge of the bed. 
And really, there's no benefit to getting any closer to the edge because you start running into the, the bed clips and your, your purge area, which, you know, I don't care about probing the purge area because it's just a purge area. So anyway, in this video, I'm going to go over kind of how the, the, the modifications that I had to make to the hot end gantry bracket and also the end stop. So really, that's the only two things I modified. I uh, Another thing, too, is that my... My minimalist fan bracket assembly has a large area of clearance here so that when this is all the way at the edge, none of my fan assembly parts hit anything. Uh, so that's how I was able to get so far over. So if you guys are looking for a super compact fan assembly that is very lightweight, uh, doesn't add a lot of height uh, or, or bulk and allows you to gain this extra amount of travel on your hot end. Consider picking up the minimalist hot end fan assembly because uh, I offered on my Shopify store for $349. And anyway, it's fantastic. Every time I run into something like this, and it's just another reason why you want to have a lightweight, compact unit like this that gives you a lot of flexibility when you're dealing with modifying the printer. Alright guys, so let's uh, jump right into the video. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing. Turn on your notification bell and leave me some comments. I love reading the comments and do my best to get back to you guys as soon as I see it. Alright, let's uh, jump right into it and I'll go over the different steps. So if you look over here from the top, you got this... Uh, you got the hot end gantry. And right there... Turn on the light so you guys can see. And right there you can see that uh, that bolt that's sticking out is hitting the uh, bracket. So I'm going to start by removing that bolt, grinding that bolt down, and if I have to, I'll grind down the lock nut as well. And then that should be able to recover some more space. Uh, the good thing is there's enough of a gap between the belt tensioner and the fan assembly that I know that we can at least recover that much that much more space. So if I can get this thing to come over by that amount, that's going to be a very good start and then we'll fine tune and tweak from there. And you want to make sure that you remember uh, how the wheel came off because these wheels are already worn in to this uh, to this extrusion. So I want to make sure that I keep the orientation the same. And I'm going to try to remove about, uh, say, about a quarter inch of this. I'm going to use a Sharpie to mark the bolt. That way I know where I need to, uh, how far I need to go. All right, so what I'm going to do here is use this uh, lock nut, but I'm not going to use it the way that, that it goes on normally. I'm going to flip it around, and I'm going to screw it down till I'm uh, below this, uh, this area that I marked. And then I'm going to grind the bolt down and, and part of this uh, nut. I'm going to take off maybe, I don't know, sixteenth of an inch maybe, maybe a millimeter or two. That way I get the clearance. You don't want to grind the other end because the other end has the lock on it. And if you start grinding on, on this, that little piece of uh, plastic will, will pop out of there. Or you may uh, distort the plastic uh, from the heat that's generated from grinding the bolt. So I'm going to grind it from this side and try to make sure I don't overheat the bolt. That way we don't mess up the lock nut part. Let me show you where we're at. So we got, we got extra clearance here. But now we're hitting on the bottom roller. I'm going to take the whole hot end assembly off of its bracket here and then work on that bottom wheel. I'll make it the same as this one and then I'll show you guys the sizes that I wound up using.
right, so I wound up cutting this one down about 20, 28.64. Yeah. Okay. And the original length, and this one I modified for another reason. Let's see what the original length was. So the original length is 33. So we need to remove about 4.4 millimeters. All right, so let me uh, jump on the grinder, cut this thing down, and then we'll try and reassemble. Another change that I had to make is the lock nut. We had to grind down this part of the lock. We reduced it down to about four and a quarter millimeter. Uh, original size of the lock nut, 4.85. So here's where we ended up. Check out the first one, 28.64 millimeters. Uh, lock wash apart, about four and a quarter. The second one, and this is how I, this is how I did it. So I just used a couple of uh, five millimeter nuts, jammed them together, and then put the uh, lock washer on top with the nylon part of the lock washer facing down, and then just uh, put this on my drill and use my grinding wheel on it while the drill was spinning to, to cut it down. Once I got it down to the right length, I finished it off using the circular sander and, uh, and the drill. And this one turned out 28.52, so a little bit shorter, uh, four millimeters. So I got one that's four and a quarter, and this one's four millimeters. And it'll be fine just as long as the... Uh, so long as the the lock part is okay, there's enough thread there to grab that uh, to grab that bolt. No problem. All right, so let's go ahead and put it back together and see if we gained any more probe area. The only problem I got now is uh, my Bowden tube is not very long. All right, guys, I'm going to look for another piece of Bowden tube. Hopefully, I have a spare long enough. And uh, we'll get it on here and then try it out. All right, guys, so this is the this is the length that I recommend that you guys cut your Bowden tube to because I tried uh, making, it, making it shorter to try to improve... Uh, efficiency but in all honesty it's it's not worth it because if you need to do something like this uh, exceed the, the the normal movement of the gantry for some reason you won't have enough potent tube so this one is 15 millimeter I'm sorry 15 inches so a 15 inch piece of Bowden tube uh, is, is perfect for an Ender 3, Ender 3 V2, uh, Ender 3 Pro anything that has a uh, 235 by 235 uh, build plate. Uh, th this should work for it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put this thing back together and then we'll uh, play around with the bed mesh. Now, these things, uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with these, but this is the Micro Swiss. Uh, dual gear extruder that I have mounted on this Ender 3 Pro and it brings this little uh, crush collar and you don't want to over tighten these because if you over tighten them too much uh, you'll deform them severely and they'll collapse this tube uh, so what I recommend that you do is leave a piece of filament sticking out of the extruder 
so that the filament will take up the space inside the tube so when you're cinching this down for the first time and this collar starts to get crushed uh, the filament being inside the tube will, will keep the tube from collapsing. And all I'm doing here is I'm pushing the Bowden tube in until it just pokes out of the uh, the aluminum uh, part here. So it's almost touching those dual gears. And here, before I tighten it down, I'm going to show you guys what this thing looks like before you crush it and the way it's supposed to look like after you crush it. So if you can see right now, oh, probably that's a better view right there. You can see that this edge right here is not crushed. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it a little bit to give you an idea of what it's supposed to look like. So you wanna leave yourself about, like right now it's got one, it's got, let me see. If you look at the bottom, it's got one, two, three threads showing. You don't wanna compress this any more than than uh, than one thread, okay? Because if you if you over compress this, you'll have you'll collapse that inside of that tube. So I'm just gonna take this. I'm gonna give it one good rotation. Anyway, there's two two threads showing down here. So here's one, and here's the other one, and the collar is right over where the third thread would be, which is just about where you want it. So I'm just gonna back it up and check it. The Bowden tube and it was four millimeters. So let's check the uh, compressed side now. You see that? So it went from four millimeters down by about 0.12. So I, I would try it like this. I wouldn't crush it anymore. And uh, if you have any problems with it uh, pushing out during prints, you can give it another quarter turn uh, until it doesn't push out anymore. But I, I wouldn't recommend tightening it any more than that from the, from to, to get started. Just start printing with it. And if you need to tighten it some more, tighten it some more. Because if you over tighten it and you collapse the inside of that tube, you'll restrict the filament from going through that section. And it will result in under extrusion. Yeah, right now we're very, very close to crashing. Let's see here. It's probably about as far as you want to go. So right now I got about maybe a millimeter of clearance. Let me show you this. So we got a it's kind of hard to tell from over here, but it's about a millimeter of clearance. What I'm going to do next is uh, remove this belt tensioner I got here, and I'm going to I'm going to file this down a little bit. So I'm just going to take about two millimeters off of it. Call me crazy, but I, I can't I can't leave it alone. I got to get the maximum amount of uh, probe area.
So what I did is, so you can see. So I ground it down and I left maybe, I don't know, millimeter and a half here. So about a millimeter and a half from the edge of the bolt. It, it, it was much longer before, it was about to here. Uh, so we took took it down pretty good. All right, so let's uh, reinstall this thing and we'll try it again. Just gonna home the printer here real quick. And I went ahead and removed the blower ducts for the parts cooling fan, that way we can see the nozzle and the probe more easily. I'm gonna move the X over to the old location. So before my maximum travel was 245. So what I did now is I logged onto a uh, clipper and I changed the value in the printer.cfg to 280. Now I, I know I'm not gonna get 280, but for the purpose of testing, we'll see how close we can get. So I'm gonna start with uh, adding 10 millimeters. So uh, this value currently is 245, so I'm gonna make it 255. And it still looks like we, we can travel some more to the right. So I'm gonna increase it by uh, five, it looks like I got five millimeters there for sure. So I'm gonna increase it to 260. And looking at the top, I still have more clearance. Change the value to 265. And it looks like I still have more room. Uh, I'm gonna change it now to 266, currently at 267. All right, so that's currently at 270. I still have more room. I can go further more further to the right if I wanted to, but I'm already I'm already getting real close to these these clips over here, so I don't want to get any closer. What I'm going to do now is just take a quick measurement to see how far off the clips I am. I'm at, I'm at 12 millimeters, so I'm 12 millimeters off the edge of the bed. All right, so our current position is 270, and we're 12 millimeters off the edge of the bed. Uh, these are values that you're going to write down because we're going to need it to configure the bed mesh in Clipper. So now let's uh, jump back over to the computer and we'll set that up. From your Clipper dashboard, head over to your machine button on the left bottom part of the screen and click on it. And then we want to open the printer.cfg. So I got it open already here. And according to the values that we received from our measurements, uh, we're going to make some changes here. In the bed mesh section, and I'll make my printer.cfg file available. That way you guys can look at it and see how I have my printer set up and use it if you decide to do so. Now, keep in mind that if you are going to change the values, so these maximum values, you would have had to have done the modifications that I made to the X gantry to get the extra travel space. All right, so right now, uh, when you're looking at uh, the clipper um, printer.cfg, you'll see a, an area called bed mesh. And let's uh, go, over the, go over the values real quick. The first thing is the, the bed mesh probe speed. Now you don't want this to be a fast speed. I know it's tempting to put this thing at like 220 or something and just watch it rock and roll through the bed mesh, but you want the movements of the probing to be accurate so you want you want slow movements you don't want to jerk the thing around all over the place because it's going to make for a, a less accurate bed mesh uh, 50 i found is a good speed the next one is horizontal z move so that means that between movements it will raise the z uh to uh, four millimeters so it's not going to go below four millimeters next one is the mesh minimum and these values are determined the first one especially by how far off the edge of the bed the probe can uh, reach. So in my case, before we made this modification, the farthest that it could go was 37 millimeters in from the rightmost side of the bed because uh, of the 47 millimeter offset and the travel 
uh, distance, a max travel distance. Now, to determine this number, let's look at my old value here under stepper uh, X. It was 248. Uh, now, 248, I had it set here as, as uh, max, but uh, the 248 was, it was actually 245. Let me change it. All right, uh, so to, at 245, your uh, maximum reach of your probe would be the max distance, 245, minus the probe offset. Uh, if you're not sure what your probe offset is, uh, this is a value that either you have in your current firmware, or if you've already successfully set up Clipper, you can find it in here as well. And uh, where that is right here so under the part that talks about the bl touch you got your x offset which is negative 47 and uh y offset is negative two we're not going to worry about this negative two because uh clipper compensates for it when it does movements having to do with this since this is a small number but this larger number this is the one we have to take into account to get the maximum probe value for this field right here uh this max mesh max the first number is X, second number is Y. You take your 245 minus your probe X offset. In my case, it's 47, so I'm going to take 47, subtract it. If your probe was on the other side of your print nozzle, it would be a positive number. You would be adding the 47. But in this case, it's a negative number, so we subtract. And that gives us 198. So 198 is the maximum uh, probe point for the X bed mesh uh, and that's right here and if you're gonna have a maximum bed mesh of 198 for the X you want your bed mesh to be square on your build plate more than likely you're gonna want to have the same size for your Y so I just repeated the same for my Y same thing with the me mesh minimum this means that all around the edge of the bed the uh, minimum amount that it will uh, reach is uh, 37 millimeters in from the outermost edge. All right, so let's uh, change these numbers now. All right, so we got our new value. It's 270. That's our new travel distance. So we're going to come down here to stepper X, change this to 270. And then we're going to come up here to the mesh max. Again, the first value is your X. We're going to take 270, we're going to minus our X probe offset, which is 47. And that gives us a maximum distance of 223. So we put 223 here. And since we're doing 223 here, we're also going to do 223 on the Y maximum as well. That way we have a nice square mesh. And if you remember our value from before where we measured the probe, uh, the position of the probe in relation to the edge of the bed, it was 12 millimeters off the edge. So we're going to put here in this mesh minimum, the first value again is X. We're going to put that as 12. And then we're also going to do the same for the Y. We're going to change that to 12. And uh, that's pretty much it. I, I, I'm going to use a probe count of 9 by 9. And uh, in the Clipper documentation, it talks about these uh, mesh PPS and the details, but this is essentially points within this uh, between the spaces of these squares where Clipper is going to apply an algorithm in this case it's bicubic to determine what these values should be based on the measurements on the corners that surround them okay once you're happy with those values uh, make sure that you you click on save and restart so I'm going to go ahead save and restart Next, let's create a bed mesh. First thing we need to do is warm up the bed. I print with PETG. For me, the best bed temperature is 80 C. You always want to make the conditions as close to the, your printing conditions as possible when creating a bed mesh. That way, those uh, values as they're recorded are recorded with a 
uh, bed at the same temperature that you're going to be printing on. Once that's warming up, I'm going to go ahead and home the printer. All right, once we're up to temp, click on this little question mark over on the bottom right part of the screen that's labeled console and uh, type in bed. The one that we're looking for is bed mesh calibrate. Click it. And now that that's loaded and our bed temperature is at 80 C, go ahead and send it. And you'll notice on the screen the, the probe points are displayed along with the values. Let me take you over to the printer so you can see what it's doing. Once the probing is complete, we're going to select this part over here that says save underscore config, right click copy, right click paste it into the console and click on the send command. All right, now our firmware is restarted. Let's take a look at the mesh that we created. Now if we, if we click on height map now, uh, it's not going to show you anything because the mesh is not loaded. So we're going to need to load it. To load it, it, it happens uh, several ways. If you start a print and the bed mesh command is loaded into uh, your Cura start G code, it will load the profile that way. We could also load it manually just to check our bed mesh. Uh, in the clear Clipper documentation, under bed mesh, uh, under loading the default profile, you'll find this line here. It says bed mesh load default. So bed mesh profile load default. Select it, right click copy, go back to your console, right click paste, and send it. It's going to load the mesh. Now if we click on height map, we'll see our bed mesh. So there, there's our bed right there. And uh, to move this around, you left click the mouse button. And while holding it down, you can move the mouse right and left, up and down, and you can move this mesh around. Uh, if you need to zoom in, you can use the mouse wheel, center mouse wheel, forward and back. And uh, if you want to look at the individual points, just put your mouse cursor on it, and it'll snap to that point. So if you notice here, our X 12 millimeter, Y 12 millimeter, that's our first probe point, has a Z value of 35, so it's a positive number, 35, and then. When you get uh, to these blue areas, these blue areas are negative numbers. And what you want to look at here with this mesh is that the center point of the mesh coincides with the center point of your build plate. In my case, my build plate is 235 by 235 millimeter. 235 divided by 2 is 117 and a half. And when we put our cursor at the center it's giving us those values so we know that our mesh is centered with our bed this is very important uh, that, that this lines up properly another area that could cause you some problems is uh, especially if you're printing something really large is with Cura because Cura for some reason wants to shift the models over and it doesn't actually put it directly in the center I have a separate video on dealing with uh, Cura and getting it centered just right. I encourage you guys to watch it. I'll link it in the video description. Now that we got our mesh all uh, verified, it looks good, it's loaded. Let's fire off a test print. So I'm gonna click here in Cura 
And we're gonna open a bed mesh that I created in Onshape. And I'll, I'll make this available in the video description, that way you guys can use it. And let me just show you a couple things about it. So this uh, left front corner, there's kind of like a little partial circle cut out of it. That designates the left front. So after you print this, if you want to look at it, uh, you'll always know where the left front is. I've also created a hole in the very center that can help you lower the nozzle down to verify that Cura is placing your model in the center of the bed. If it's not centered, watch my centering video. Uh, that will help you get things set up just right. All right, let's uh, slice this thing and send it to the printer for printing. And let me verify a couple things here. You want to make sure that you, that you don't have any build plate adhesion. So you see right here, I mistakenly had brim turned on. If, if it tried to print this, it would probably crash into the bed clips. So you want to make sure that this is set to none. Uh, it's not going to put any support because it doesn't need it. Let's re-slice it. And this should be under an hour print if you're printing at 100 millimeters a second. Yep, 54 minutes. All right, we're good to go. Let's upload it to Clipper. Click Start Job. And then let me take you over there so you guys can watch what it's doing. Print finished, let's check it out. Let's move the printer out of the way so we can look at it. Perfect. Looks like I can go down on the Z axis just a little bit, uh, but for the most part, it looks really, really good. So, guys, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turn on your notification bell, and leave me some comments. I love reading the comments and do my best to get back to you guys as soon as I see them. Anyway, guys, I think this is. Uh, this is fantastic. We fixed the problem, at least I did, with uh, my inconsistent bed meshes and clipper. So now it's just build the bed mesh and print. You know, no futzing around, no editing the mesh. It was a real struggle for me. Ironic ironically enough, uh, this uh, build plate, and I'm not sure if you guys are already using Garolite for your build surface, but man, this stuff is amazing. Once you experience this material, you just, there's no going back to anything else. Parts just pop right off as soon as it cools off. When the bed is warm, the parts stick to it like crazy. It's just, anyway, it's a game changer. Just amazing. A lot of you have been asking me for a version for the CR-10S Pro V2. They're currently in stock at Amazon. I'll put a link in the video description for you guys that have the big format printers. The build surface is 310 by 320 if you're interested. And you'd like to support the channel, I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, guys, that's a wrap for this video. Till the next one. Take care.